When doing trigonometry in triangles, you will learn three new rules. The first of these will be the sin rule. In any triangle, the vertices are indicated with a capital letter. To name sides, we have two options. The first option is to, for example, name this AC, indicating that it is the line segment from point A to point C. Or I can choose to describe it in terms of the angle right across from it. Side AC is right across angle B and can also be called side lowercase b. Similar to this, straight across angle C is side small c and right across angle A we have side A. In any triangle we then have six measurements. We have the three angle sizes and the three side lengths. In this chapter, we are going to focus on calculating angle sizes and side lengths of triangles. Up to now, this is the knowledge you have. Firstly, to determine angle sizes in any triangle, you can use interior angles of a triangle. Then, for a 90 degree triangle or right angled triangle, you can use Pythagoras to determine side lengths. And then also in a 90 degree triangle, in grade 10, you added the knowledge where we use our trig ratios, and that will be a combination of sides and angles. And now in grade 11, we expand this knowledge by adding three new formulas that can help you to determine angle sizes and side lengths in any triangle. The first of these three new rules is the sin rule. This rule can be applied in different ways. The left-hand side option is easier to use if you want to determine an angle and the right hand side option is easier to use when you are determining a side length. In the rule itself all the different possibilities are listed. However, in an actual calculation all you need is one equation meaning one equal sign and the different letters that you are going to use will become clear from the information given in your question. In the first few lessons of this chapter, we are going to have a look at how to apply these rules. In the last lesson, I will however also prove the rules that we are going to use. Let's have a look at how we are going to use the sin rule. Here I only have part of the rule because as I've mentioned, we only need an equation. So here we have angle A and side A. So on our picture we focus on angle A and the side across from it. On the right hand side we have angle B together with side B and once again on the picture we focus on angle B and the side straight across from it. So in the sin rule we always focus on pairs. There will always be two pairs which will be two sides and two angles and that means four variables of which you will need information about three of them to be able to solve the fourth one. This means that the sin rule can be used when you have two angles and one side or when you have both the sides and one of the angles. Let's have a look at a few examples. Example 1. In triangle ABC, angle A is 55 degrees angle C 40 degrees and AB 5 centimeters. Calculate the length of BC. In the information, they name the sides according to capital letters and I'm going to start off renaming them in terms of lowercase or small letters. We are given information about two angles and one side and we have all the information about the pair of side and angle C and therefore we can use the sin rule. Our second pair will then be side and angle A. Because we are determining a side length, I'm going to write down the sin rule with my sides in the numerator. And as already mentioned, we are going to work with pair A along with pair C. Next, we can substitute in what we were given 
So angle A is 55 degrees, side C is 5 centimeters, and angle C is 40 degrees. So to solve side A, all I need to do is take the sin 55 and multiply with it on the right. When determining this on a calculator, you will find that A is 6,37 centimeters. Example 2. In triangle DEF, angle E is 40 degrees, EF is 4 millimeters, and DF 5 millimeters. Calculate the size of angle D and angle F and the length of F. Once again, I'm going to start off rewriting the sides in terms of lowercase letters and indicating the given information on the sketch. We have angle E side E and side D. This means I can use the sin rule with my complete pair side and angle E. My second pair will then be side and angle D because I already have side D. So then I can start off determining the size of angle D. I'm determining an angle size so I put the angles in my sin rule at the top. And as mentioned, we are going to work with the pair of E, which we have all the information, and the pair D. Next, I can substitute all the given information. And to get sin D alone on the left, I'm going to multiply with 4 on the right. Next, with our knowledge of trig equations, you will know that you need to now get a reference angle and then work in the quadrants where sin is positive to get your final answers. In the first quadrant, I will get an angle size for D of 30,95 degrees. In the second quadrant, I'm going to say 180 minus this reference angle, and that will give me a value of 149,05 degrees. The second option can however immediately be thrown out, because simply adding angle D and angle E will then already have a sum of bigger than 180 degrees, while all three angles of the triangle should add up to 180 degrees. Therefore, there's only the one possible answer for angle D. To calculate the size of angle F, we are then going to use interior angles of a triangle and say 180 degrees minus the 40 for angle E, and the 30,95 for angle D. Therefore, angle F will be equal to 109,05 degrees. Lastly, we need to determine the length of side F, so we're going to use pair F in our sin rule along with our original pair E. And once again, as I'm determining a side, I'm putting the sides at the top. After substituting, when I now solve F by multiplying on the right, F will have a size of 7,35 millimeters. Example 3. In triangle GHI, GH is 5, GI 9, and angle I 28 degrees. Determine the size of H if H is an obtuse angle. Here we are given two sides and an angle, and once again we have a complete pair of side and angle in I, and because we are determining angle H, the other pair will be pair H. Next, we once again substitute, and then get sin H alone, determining a reference angle, and then splitting up into the two quadrants where sin is positive. In example 2, only one of the two possible angle sizes was acceptable because the second angle size would have caused the sum of the interior angles to be more than 180 degrees. Here in example 3 this time, both of these options are possible. That is why it's important to go back to the information to see that they've mentioned A is an obtuse angle and therefore the first option is not valid and the answer for H is 122,32 degrees. If it wasn't given either on the picture or in words that H is an obtuse angle, 
Both of these options would have been accepted as an answer. Let's see why. Here we have a triangle with exactly the same dimensions as was given in example 3, but angle H is an acute angle. This possibility of two different angle sizes for H is only possible if the angle that is given is across from the shorter of the two sides that was given. When I move point H, you will see that side GH becomes shorter until it reaches a minimum and then it will start increasing again and at some point it will be a length of 5 centimeters again. So here you can clearly see that it's possible to have two triangles, tri triangle GH1I and triangle GH2 and I with exactly the same given information.